from being a mysterious yokai to fancy scrolls and tiger yokai. Kinda, anyway. Hello, Magic here, and welcome back to another episode of Interesting Toho Facts. The series where I talk about facts from Toho that I find either fun, unusual, or simply interesting. So without further ado, let's begin the Interesting Toho Facts number 51. Number 5. When it comes to the fighting games, you usually have alternate palettes in the event someone else chose the color or you want to be fancy. These palettes can be fun easter eggs as shown when we talked about how Raisin's alternates were based on the Vocaloids. This next person will be Ichirin. If you switch to the white palette, it looks similar to Index from a certain Magical Index series. Now that I've seen it, I wonder if... A certain scientific monk. I'll take it. Number 4. Whenever you've seen Byakuren in the game, you might have noticed this fancy ass scroll she has. It's pretty cool, I'll admit, and I'll explain to you why. The scroll is called the Sorceress Sutra Scroll. It was created while Byakuren was in Makai. The Sorceress Sutra Scroll is unique to her. The sutras Byakuren needs in order to use her powers are written on it. It has an automatic mode, which will cause it to recite spells on its own. Ain't that convenient. Compared to a regular paper scroll, the amount the Sorceress Sutra scroll holds is limitless. UNLIMITED POWER! It is also said that this scroll won't deteriorate over time. Lastly, because it has a will of its own, no one except for Byakuren is able to handle it. Man, is there any downsides to the scroll because I certainly haven't found any. Number 3 While on the topic of the scroll, let's talk about the cast of UFO for a bit. I want you to look at all the characters and tell me if you notice something with the girls. In case you didn't know, in UFO, all the girls are holding, or at the very least, has an inanimate object. Nazrin with her dowsing rods, Kogusa and her umbrella, Ichirin and her rings, Murasa and her ladle and anchor, Sho with her spear and pagoda, and Byakuren with said scroll, and Nue with her spear. Even Reimu, Marissa, and Sane are wielding something as well. Reimu and Sane with the purification rod and Marissa with her wand. Looks like everyone in this game wanted to bring something, didn't they? Number 2 Nue, our friendly neighborhood alien. Although friendly is very debatable. Anyway, she's said to be one of the most mysterious and feared yokai in many years, yet has been defeated by humans many times. Might as well add Reimu, Marissa, and Sane to the list of humans who beaten her. There are many differing legends according to her appearance because she hides her true form. At some point, she was sealed underground and because of the events of Subterranean, she resurfaced back in Gensokyo. I swear, everyone in UFO needs to thank Kanako and Oku in the future. If it weren't for those two, they'd still be underground. Nue is a very mischievous girl who reacts badly to anyone finding her true form and enjoy some rather malicious pranks. Yeah, remind me not to chill with her in the future. Despite this, when she found out how Byakuren's followers were friendly to Yokai, she did feel a bit guilt over her actions. For her, all the other girls are young and usually refers to them in this term due to her nature of ancient Yokai. Hmm, ancient Yokai. I wonder if she's old enough to join the Old Maids Alliance. After the events of the extra stage in UFO, she does go to the temple to train. She isn't well acquainted with the other yokai at the Miyuren temple and can apparently be frequently seen near the edges of the property, looking bored. If you don't want to be bored, hang out with the three fairies of light. I'm sure you four have loads of fun pranking people. Number 1 Now if you didn't know, Sho was born as a tiger yokai. But it's not as simple as that, mind you. Her appearance is not that of a real tiger due to the fact that they're not native to Japan. Instead, her appearance was that from fear created by stories about tigers that had spread to Japan. As such, her existence originally depended on the people of Japan remaining ignorant about what real tigers were like. Eh, close enough. Here's where things get real interesting. 
While Byakin was still a famous monk in the outside world, she scouted Sho to become a disciple of the god Bisho Mountain, whom the monk currently worshipped. Because she was a yokai, in order for Byakin to gain the trust of the yokai living on the mountain, Sho, meanwhile, hid the fact that she was a yokai from humans. Naughty naughty there, but for a good reason. Bisho Mountain also assigned Sho a servant, a mouse yokai you all know too well, Nazrin not only to assist her but also to keep an eye on her. As the years passed, Sho proved herself a more than worthy disciple and Nazarene's rule solidified as her subject. Having a more solid identity as Bisho Martin's avatar also prevented Sho from fading away. And that's a good thing I would say. After Byakuren was sealed away, Sho couldn't do much. If she had tried to do something, the fact that she was a yokai would have been revealed. So she continued serving Bisho Martin. Damn, looks like the position backfired in a way. However, hundreds of years later, she, Murasa, Ichiren, and Nazarin appeared above ground in Gensokyo where they vowed to rescue Byakuren at all costs. And it turned out pretty well considering Byakuren's appearances. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Which facts were your favorite? Would you like a series involving our favorite Buddhists? Do you think Byakuren's school is pretty cool? Or do you think It Sucks Show was put in a no-win situation when Byakuren was sealed away? If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe, or else New Way might play a prank on me, and that can't turn out well for me. Either way, this is Magi, and thanks again for watching.